Hey guys, it's Spode. I'm doing another night build today. Maybe eventually I'll find time to do builds for other classes. This is the class I like doing the builds for the most right now. I like Whirlwind a lot. Basically, I wanted to make a build that could do Wrath 10 forges as well as possible. And the big challenge with the forge right now is stuff gets so much max life over the course of a forge run and they end up with too much life to kill them fast enough. And I wanted to see if we could get around that. There have been dot builds in the game for forever. The Soli Mantle has been in the game for forever, but it wasn't really necessary until this update to use it for anything, but it's really, really handy now because it basically does infinite damage, or it does as much damage as you need it to do, depending on the enemy's health. So the point of the build is just to get as many ways to trigger this damage as possible all the time. The way we are primarily going to be doing that is by applying damage over time's effects with Whirlwind. Depending on the state of your gear, you're going to have five, maybe six sources of this extra damage at any given time time. I say maybe six because at a certain point you might want to start using the ferocious affinity rune, but I think being tanky is really really helpful so I'm still using the Bygarth shield rune right now and just trying to get as much shields as possible. I've actually been really liking this Adrian effect rune where it re-triggers your effect because you can just do a couple ancestral strikes, get your effect, and then potentially re-trigger it a few more times. I think it could be fun to mess around with this with the with the ultra cannon as well i'm not sure exactly how this works but it seems like you should be able to be getting a ton of these things off all the time so that that could be pretty fun too but it, maybe that's the next build so our different sources of damage over time or just soul eating mantle procs are going to be from whirlwind which counts as one because it's a channeled skill if you're like me you probably always just looked at damage over time effects and forget that it works for channeled skills as well i also tried this build on mage with the arcane beams or whatever it's called but I found it really boring because you're just putting out clones and they do all the work and it's not as much fun. This can be a very active playstyle build because it's whirlwind you're trying to get right up in people's face and deal damage to them which is way more interesting especially over the course of like a two hour forge run like you you don't want to just be standing there while your clones do all the work unless you're afk doing something else it's okay I guess. Okay back to our sources of damage we're gonna have whirlwind we're gonna have skewer this doesn't actually do a lot because the only ways we have to apply it are unfortunate cast which is like one every five seconds assuming that you're actually hitting an enemy when that fortunate cast comes along and from whirlwind applying skewing which you have to hit five times on an enemy before they get a stack of skewer. So this isn't going to do a ton for us. It's okay. but And then we do the damage over time upgrade to it so that it actually benefits from it. Another source of damage over time, we're going to get burn from these fireballs and these apply burn to basically everything on your screen. So you're going to at, like always have a 4% damage over time dot on everything once you do a couple ancestral strikes, which we'll do pretty quickly. So we'll get burn. We're going to be applying the damage with our butterfly sword, which you can see I don't even have my affinity maxed out with it, so we can get a little bit more out of it. But the main point is just it's another damage over time effect, and the primordial version actually has a, another 3% of enemies max life as elemental damage per tick. So this, this dot is actually doing... So this dot is actually doing 7% of enemies max life per tick, not just 4, so that's really powerful. Another source of this is from our Echoes of Villainous. I'm not actually sure if this counts as damage over time because it's different, but it should still scale off of your Soul Eating Mantle because it does damage based on the initial damage dealt. So even if this doesn't get the 4% buff, it's still going to do, you know, 1% of their of their life. It takes a little while to proc, but the nice thing is like you're going to hit with an Ancestral Strike and you're going to apply fire damage to everything and that's going to crit and that's going to get Echoes of Villainous on it. So stuff that you're not even really fighting yet is going to start ticking down even faster. It's not going to make a huge difference, but it is another source of damage. And then like I mentioned earlier, if you feel super tanky, Without shields, you can put on the Ferocious Affinity Rune for a little bit of extra damage as well. But I'm using Thorn by Protection right now, at least. Maybe once I get a good Legendary Chest, I will try out without it. 
As far as our attributes go, I'm pretty much just taking defensive options. We really don't care about like our raw damage anywhere in this build. You can see zero added raw damage, zero added reaper damage. The only added elemental damage is just from our skill tree here, I think. I'm not sure where else this would be coming from. Oh, and I guess from these spots in the Ancestral Legacy, but that's more just trying to get to where we want to be. So we're really just taking defensive options here, trying to be tanky. And then here we're going for the elemental resistance multiplier. This is nice because if you get like the damage over time elemental enemies, this just stays up all the time. It makes you a little bit tankier. And then we want crit strike and ancestral strike chance because we're using ancestral strikes to trigger our runes and those make us even tankier. You can see my defensiveness isn't that crazy. Long term, I probably want either the evasion turns into armor chest, which I can't remember what it's called right now, or just a armor multiplier chest. I think technically the evasion turning into armor one is a little bit better just for this rune because you basically get to double dip that stat into evasion and armor and it sums them all up before the division so that's probably the best way to go but the nice thing about this rune is you don't need to be that tanky because you just get so much extra health basically so it's not super super crucial that you have a legendary chest but if you do it's gonna help for sure for other gear choices i'm actually gonna hop into Slurm Planner. If you don't know about this site, it's made by someone in the community, and it's like a D3 planner level build planner for Slormancer. Really, really well done. Definitely recommend checking it out. I just imported my save, and then I added legendaries for the slots that I don't have any, because I uh, want to show you kind of what, what the optimal version of the build would be. I've made some tiny changes to my gear. I set everything to reinforcement level 15, which it's not all quite there, but it's all close, and I optimized it all for my Reaper, because I'm switching that around all the time. The Reaper affinity doesn't matter too much on this build because you only really care about the 3% life per tick and that doesn't scale much otherwise. So for a helm, I'm using the max life multiplier, uh, vital helm of vitality. This doesn't matter too much because all your health is going to come from shields anyway, but it's really just not any helms that are really, really crazy for this build. So max life is nice just because you have a little bit extra life. There's really not a good necklace for this. Um, I tried messing around with ice imbued skills applying burn and that's just still the necklace I'm wearing. I found that using the fireballs to apply burn to everything instead felt better, although if you don't like doing that, you could always spec into ice and view and it's kind of cute to be able to do that if i could get this and ice and view with the current number of stones we have i might because this ore is pretty nice for extra elemental resistance but i i can't right now so i don't think it's really worth it like using the fireballs you'll see in the gameplay if i haven't edited it in already that they just go all over the place indomitable mountain is the name of the chest i would use that's i couldn't remember it earlier basically if, if I was to put this on, I would spec everything out of armor and into evasion instead of right now it's all into armor. And it basically just double dips so that your Thornbite rune blocks way, way more damage. So leading mantle. This is really where all your damage is coming from. I don't have one of these yet, but this is what I would like to have just for some extra damage reduction. We're going to be doing ancestral strikes all the time, so we're going to get rid of the staggered damage really fast. Basically just 23% damage reduction. I think there was at one point a bug where this would count as you dealing damage to yourself in which case if that's still going on which i think it's fixed but if that's still going on the soul eating mantle might eat your soul instead i don't have it right now so i can't test if you put this on and you get your soul eaten uh I warned you. I have both my rings set to this. I don't think it double dips and gives plus two, I guess we can look. Oh, it looks like it does in the builder. I don't know if it works like that in the game, but it's only gonna buff these two and we don't really care about either of them, but we don't really care about any of the rings. This can kind of be whatever. The armor multiplier is nice if you're ever dropping, especially if you're using the ferocious affinity rune. I would definitely recommend having these boots on because your health is gonna be going down. If you're using the bygarde of shields rune, you can probably put on some else but this is nice if you ever drop down really low it kind of gives you a chance to bounce back life leech here is nice just in the cases where your health is going down there's not really a ton else here that'll help us so and take life leech you could also take the primordial crusade which is just another chance to deal damage to enemies i feel like it probably kind of sucks another option is this all skills have 25 percent cooldown time i don't actually know for sure but it might allow your base cooldown to go below two seconds I'm not 100% sure. I don't know what base cooldown time on your skills means for this malediction. But the Life Leech gloves are good and they can be used on like any build, so 
I would not worry about rolling it off of Life Leech, even though you're mostly going to have shields instead of health anyway. It goes Villainous here. It's mostly only going to affect stuff from the fireballs because you're going to kill stuff in less than two seconds generally anyway. But stuff getting hit by your fireballs will die way faster with that goes Villainous on, which is nice. The shoulders... You can use Earth Break because we are going to be using our grappling hooks every once in a while, uh, and you'll get a little bit extra damage out of that. Or you can do the Heavens of Steel for some extra, an extra Reaper damage multiplier, which isn't really going to do anything for us. Either way, these shoulders aren't that important. You can tell from this build, a lot of Storm Ramster builds are like this, but um, this one in particular, really, it's built around Soul Eating Mantle. The other stuff kind of helps it out. You just want to be tankier, though. Anything to make you tankier is going to be good. And then I always, almost always use the Area Damage Reduction Ultimatum. It's really strong, and Area Damage does a lot of damage, so you're going to want to have a thing to get past that. It's a really good way to do it. I'll link that build in the description, too. For the actual stats on your gear, I could probably roll Max Life off of most of these. You pretty much want your crit strike and ancestral strike chance as high as you can get them and then you're going to want to just put defensive stats everywhere else all of our damage is coming from soul eating mantle and there's really no way with the way the build is set up currently to make your actual damage catch up to it so i would take defensive stuff i would definitely take tenacity and you really just need like one tenacity roll on your gear and you can get to 100 percent tenacity because we've got it here and we've got it on our attributes and then we're also going to use it on whirlwind so i would take tenacity 100 percent tenacity is really really nice to have one thing to keep in mind with tenacity is that i believe that the uh, control impairing effects that it blocks can sometimes stop your whirlwind channel so like the bats when they like knock you away i think that can stop your whirlwind channel and and you have a two second cooldown on all your skills so having that interrupted is really bad so you definitely want over 100 percent tenacity just so that that doesn't happen you, you'll still get hit by silences but um having your cast get interrupted as little as possible is definitely ideal and then other than that you're just kind of taking defensive options get crits get defensive and you'll be okay. Um, if you're not using the Thornbite Protection, I definitely would keep Max Life on. But if you are, you can probably roll it off. Uh, I might try rolling it off after I get a good chest, but I don't have one yet. I showed this a couple times earlier, so let's finish it up. This is really the only thing I care about in the Ancestral Legacy Tree. The Ice Aura Air Conditioner is also pretty nice, but it's not super essential. So if you want to have your burning trail behind you or something, you can go another direction. This doesn't actually apply burn to enemies, but I guess in theory you could take the, the boots that make it so it does apply burn and then that's one more way to apply burn, but you're going to be applying it everywhere with this anyway. It's not really necessary because 13 fireballs is a lot. They pierce, they go all over the place, and you're just going to see that everything is getting burnt. And that's damage over time, and we want damage over time. And then skills. We're mostly going to be just whirlwinding. One of the nice things about whirlwind is that it kind of sneaks past the base cooldown time of, of this malediction because you're just going to be channeling it all the time. So if you stop, you will have to wait two seconds, but you, you're you not going to be stopping channeling unless you get silenced or something. Whirlwind is basically our way to life leech if we ever get down to zero shields. So you kind of do want it to be decently strong so that you can life leech well. So I'm taking the increased damage here and I'm going to take the block stacks because those are nice. It feels like you can move through enemies when you're channeling whirlwind no matter what. So don't worry about this. This is where we're getting our last bit of tenacity. This is just more damage and this is a way to apply skewing or skewer. Skewing gun. I never read this ability title before. Um, really, the only thing we want Roland for is it it gets buffed by Soliding Mantle, so that it's doing 4% of an enemy's life, no matter what their life is, every hit, and it's going to do that a lot. Whatever, However often continuously is, it's going to do it that often. So it's going to be doing a lot of damage from that. And then if you want to group enemies up, that does help kill stuff faster, so you can use Grappling Hook for that. I'm getting the block stacks with it, and then this is like essential Grappling Hook. You need to have it. Yeah, I, I can't imagine, unless you like really want to get minions, you just always take Captain Hook. You're always going to get the damage reduction from it. You may as well apply Elemental Resistance Broken, because we're doing a lot of Elemental 
damage over time effects, and then this one doesn't cost any mana, so sometimes you get a little bit extra damage. It's not going to be a huge difference. This whole tree we basically are just taking for skewering, so we're going to do it if our cast is fortunate, which gives us a way to do it without just Whirlwind. In theory, we can get it off our grappling hook, which would be kind of nice to get it on everything. Some extra crit damage because armor penetration doesn't do that much. Get extra stacks in case you ever run into something where you can somehow buy it often enough to have multiple stacks. And then these ones don't really matter. You can kind of take anything here. Skewering for an additional 10% doesn't matter that much because we really just care about solely mantle damage. More crit strike damage just in case. You know, do it as a few crit strike. Mostly because these don't do too much. Like, I, I don't know. No, nothing's ever going to hit you when, you're, when their life is full in this build. And then this gives us the damage over time. This is really... These two are like the only things we care about here. If you don't want to worry about Skewer, you can try one of the other specializations. This one's probably tankier, but it, you'll be a little bit slower as well. So, And then as far as gameplay goes, um, I pretty much would only use this in the Forge because really the place where it shines is that no matter how high an enemy's life gets, it, does, it kills them just as fast. So in Expedition, it doesn't really make a difference because enemy life isn't going to be that crazy. But you can see we just kind of... And the fireballs just go everywhere, and then life just ticks down, you know, 4% of the time. Everything's going to die pretty fast, especially the stuff that you're, like, directly attacking is going to die really fast. Um, we do have this 2 second cooldown on our skills. If you're getting silenced or anything, what I would recommend is, like, drop a banner, do a, do a grappling hook, and get everything together, and then just whirlwind them again. Um, you're going to have to wait 2 seconds anyway, so you may as well do other things in that time. And then as far as the upgrades you take go, you can kind of take whatever you want. I just take the stuff that's the least laggy, so don't get the ground effects and stuff, but you can give them as much health as you want. Um, you don't... I wouldn't take the damage ones just because you don't... The, the main reason... Well, on other builds I take the damage effects because as long as you can kill them before they hurt you, it doesn't matter. So you kind of want to take less health because you can just insta-kill stuff, but on this build you can kind of take all the health ones and then the enemies are never dealing more damage so they won't kill you. And you're dealing like constantly more damage to them, so you don't really actually have to worry about the increased health because you're just giving yourself extra damage when you increase their health uh, functionally. I mean really you're you're just keeping pace with whatever their health is because the Solid Mantle and the Butterfly Effect are going to scale off of their damage, or their health, so it doesn't really matter how much health they have, you're just going to do infinite. Resistance to damage over time does technically make you slower, but it doesn't, it doesn't actually do that much. And even with 75%, I wouldn't ever take it if it's 100% because you don't do any damage, but you can take 50% resistance to damage over time pretty health, health ah pretty comfortably and you can see they're still dying right um it's it's not gonna break the character so you can take that i wouldn't take 100 percent because i i haven't actually tried it but i think it'll make it so you don't do any damage so i would steer clear of that one otherwise though just take stuff that's not gonna like insta kill you and you'll be okay and yeah i've done you know 100 wave wrath 10 Forge runs with this, and it's not that hard. Um, and like a, like always with the Vargarth rune, eventually if you have like a billion shield and you're not worried, you can always swap over to Ferocious Affinity and you'll see you start clearing stuff a little bit faster because it's just one more source of damage over time. Um, so that's, that's always an option as well. Right, stuff just kind of melts if you have an, an additional damage over time source. That's pretty nice to get as well, and you can get the effect going pretty fast. Um, oh, I didn't remember, but remember to swap this off too if you're going to do that, because the... Actually, I would probably not do this one. I would probably do... Because you don't actually care about the damage of the damage over time, you just want to apply it. So you just want it up as much as possible. So I would, I would lower the constraint and just apply the effect as much as possible. But you definitely want to be careful about your health if you're doing that because um, you're not going to be building up any extra. But yeah, that's basically the build. Um, 
I guess I'll play it and keep recording for a little bit to have some gameplay to include.